Hello and welcome back to Canada CPA Online Academy Sharing the Wisdom. So in today's CAS series, we are going to look at the next CAS that is auditor's responsibility relating to fraud in an audit. So this is a very important um, standard, uh, not directly asked as such, but as you know, audit is is like it's 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 a piece uh, everywhere that is that gets linked. It's not um, separately assessed as such. It's like what are the internal controls? So are they functioning? What is the risk? What is the materiality? What is the evidence? What would be the what are the results? What is the what are the procedures? And then everything together gives you an audit opinion on that financial statements. So any any auditing standard you would see, you cannot view it or study it as a as a standalone uh, standard as such. It is it is always linked, and that is why it is very important to understand how to link those when you are writing your, especially for your day two assurance role. Are you able to uh, connect with all these aspects in your answer? That is that is what uh, the marker is going to see that. Are you able to connect all the dots? So um, we'll go ahead with the standard. Okay, so yeah, so this is the CAS 240, the auditor's responsibility relating to fraud in an audit of financial statements. Now, this is a huge standard. Like it's it's um, it, it it has a lot of information. So it starts with the usual introduction, objectives, requirements. But what I wanted to point out to you is. It has a lot of uh, other explain explanatory material as compared to other standards you will see. And then in the ap appendix, you will see the examples of the fraud risk factors, what we call as a fraud risk triangle, and then the examples of possible audit procedures. Now, this is very important from exam point of view because many of the times uh, you will see that you get a response that the audit, audit procedure was not specific. So what does that mean is if it's not specific, that means you are trying to quote something that is very generalized and not specific to the point or the issue that is addressed in that um, in that case as such. So pay attention to this, uh, this appendix, uh, read through the details, uh, detailed explanations and examples that they have given, and it will help you to uh, write your audit procedures in a more appropriate and very specific manner that if this has happened, what what procedure should I be writing? So um, pay attention to that. Uh, so we start with the standard. So as uh, uh, it starts with the scope of this CAS, so auditor's responsibility relating to the fraud in an audit of financial statement. Now, uh, you all know that we always say that audit is a reasonable assurance. So it is not a perfect um, perfect analysis or perfect uh, opinion that everything uh, sta stated in the financial statements is true and correct. That is not what auditor aims at. Auditor is certifying that there is a reasonable assurance that there is no material misstatement. We are not saying that everything is correct. We are saying that there are no material misstatements. So. That is, a, that is the important difference between um, like the, the scope that what, so what is what is the auditor's responsibility? And then uh, it, it also expands to uh, 315 and 330, which we'll uh, see later uh, related to the identifying of the risk and identity and the material misstatements. So that's what I'm saying that uh, it, you cannot view all the standards as a standalone, it rolls out into one thing, links into the another, another links into the next one. So that's that. That's what how you have to uh, give in your answer. So first, they are defining characteristics of the fraud. So what is a fraud? So the the misstatement can happen in both uh, circumstances. It could be a fraud or the error, this standard specifically aims at uh, fraud, but the misstatements could be intentional, unintentional. Obviously errors are 
uh, unintentional usually and fraud is intentional but since it is intentional and it's a fraud the the possibility of going it undetected is very high because it is a deliberate action it's not that someone uh, made an error slip, flipped a zero or something like that when it is intentional that means uh, it would be hidden it would be uh, suppressed somehow and uh, so that is why it is important for an auditor to um, have sufficient procedures in its audit to to be possible to to uh, um, discover those possibilities of fraud um <clears throat> so um yeah so it could be intentional or intentional and the uh, misstatements resulting from fraudulent financial reporting and misstatements resulting from misappropriation of assets so there are two different types so one is the reports are um, like extra revenue is booked uh, or uh, additional expenses are booked just to show inflate the profits and so that is that is like um, playing with the financial statements and then the other part is misappropriation of assets which is like actually cash is stolen there is embezzlement of uh, financial money or some asset is uh, used in in inappropriate uh, ways so that those are the two distinctions where there is fraudulent financial reporting and then misappropriation of assets so you need to identify which one is getting uh, triggered here then uh, then the next section is responsibility for the prevention and detection of who is responsible that is the question like who whose responsibility it is to detect the fraud so the uh, responsibility always rests with the with the management or those with those those who are charged with governance as they say so the responsibility is is with management so what is their responsibility is their responsibility is to design the internal controls uh, in such a way that the frauds are prevented in first place that they are prevented people are not encouraged to have fraud so that the system design should be such that the fraud is prevented and second is if fraud is committed it should be detected so there are two types of internal controls now if we want to take an example that suppose a check signing check signing a check is prepared by one person and signed by another person so that is it is so first like just segregating these two aspects gives the um gives the system stability of preventing like if the same person is uh preparing the checks and signing the checks it gives that person an opportunity to commit fraud so by segregating that duty of preparation and uh, signature then we are preventing the possibility of fraud so that is prevention and detection would be like uh, regularly at the month end reviewing what what, what checks were reviewed uh, sorry issued and uh, what was the amounts is does it make sense if the amounts then suppose up for a smaller companies any checks issued after a certain amount limit say above 50k should have a double signature should have a additional authority so these are wherever so these additional um, steps would be for the detection of the fraud so the internal control system should be designed uh, for this prevention now uh, remember as an auditor If we are saying that the responsibility of the prevention detection is rests with the management so what is the auditor's responsibility is to check those internal controls whether they are in place whether they are uh, sufficient whether they can be trusted whether they are operating effectively so all these come under auditor's purview so if you if you see uh, response what are the responsibilities of the auditor so the auditor's responsibility is to obtain reasonable assurance from the financial statement taken as a whole or free from material response uh, material misstatements so how would we do that is by starting with the internal controls and uh, deciding whether they are appropriate or not so what are the steps like as we discussed like first we start with the internal controls so then based on that the effectiveness of the internal control we would be deciding the materiality what would be the materiality at what level uh, whether we want to set it at the overall level at the individual assertions levels and then uh, performing the procedures collecting the evidence analytical procedures to check if everything uh, looks good then documenting everything and then having a questioning mind of like a curious and questioning mind to 
uh, ensure that everything makes sense or not. Then next um, uh, part, they're saying that as we discussed, the risk of not detecting the statement resulting from fraud is higher than risk of uh, not detecting but with the error. Possibly so because it is since it is intentional, there may be some steps taken to hide those uh, fraud or those transactions, and that is why it is important to have that questioning mind. Uh, as as it is always said that trust but verify. It's not that you have to question every single piece of paper, but just have that inquisitive mind. Whether it makes sense, asking the right questions to the right uh, people, and just making sure that everything what you're looking in front of you makes sense and relates to all the aspects of the financial statements. Is there, if there is any uh, links to be explored further. So that is that is auditor's responsibility. Uh, then the risk of auditor not detecting a material misstatement from manage, management fraud is even greater than employee fraud because management is frequently in a position to directly or indirectly manipulate the accounting records, present fraudulent financial information and override. So the controls are designed, but the controls are designed, but again, there is it is important to, uh, to verify if they are functioning effectively. That is the effectiveness of function as we discussed about the check limits. So, um, okay, this is these are the internal controls, but then verify actually whether it is followed or not. Check, give give it a uh, like check the evidence whether okay. So, so suppose this check is above fifty thousand. Was it approved by two two people? Like then, uh, who is actually preparing the checks? Who is actually signing the checks? Is there the segregation of duty followed? Is someone reviewing? Are there any? Uh, process logs of say suppose there are system approvals of things then are there the logs that okay this is the accountant this is the senior accountant this is the controller that who is authorizing this so wh what is the log is it is it approved from his login so you can do some system uh, credential audit or actual uh, evidence audit that um, whether it supports whether the the internal control is uh, actually operating effectively or not and then there are some additional responsibilities to the auditor that when there is a fraud, there is like some responsibilities under the law that you have to report it to the proper authorities, especially for government audit, fund audit. If there is an inappropriation of government funding or something like that, you, you have obligation to report uh, th those type of frauds to the authorities. Now, um, the objectives. So the what are the objectives of the auditor? First, so first is to identify and assess the risk of material misstatement because whole whole purpose is is expressing the opinion. Then to obtain the sufficient and appropriate uh, evidence and then to respond ap appropriately to the fraud. So like if if you suspect of any fraud, you will have to redesign your some of your plan. You will have to redesign your materiality. You, you might have to add some additional processes uh, or procedures to. Uh, verify your suspicion, whether it's a fraud or error or whatever you are suspicion of. So th those are the those are the objectives, and as for that, the whole audit plan would be structured. Now, um, the overall we have discussed professional skepticism a uh, number of times, like trust but verify that any any uh, judgment, any any document evidence that comes your use your professional judgment and knowledge to question that. Uh, document and uh, verify that evidence. Now, uh, another important part of this whole, it, it has been discussed again and again, that discussion among the engagement team. Now, if, if you have experience doing the audits, you will see that audit is done in a team and in a way that it is still like, in it, it, it is done in a different bits and pieces. So like one person is uh, looking after the cash and bank and uh, bank statements and things like that. One person is auditing the accounts receivable. Another person is looking after the evidence for accounts payable and checking and doing all the procedures for that. And then as a combined, it is reported to the partner or the supervisor or whoever is handling, leading the team. And then it would be finalized. But now 
remember, even if it is done in pieces, still it is it is a whole financial statement. So like, and it is linked, right? So cash would be very closely linked with accounts receivable or accounts payable for that for the the um the payment uh, side of it. So uh, a person who is doing cash audit, if he's suspicious of there some uh, fraudulent checks or some uh, some some payments that are issued so he's suspicious of why, why these payments are issued to whom he should talk to the person who is handling the accounts payable side of things and see if uh, he also has some similar suspicions if not then where are these um, payments issued and and that type of thing similarly say for accounts receivable side of things like uh, if if a person on in the cash uh, sees that there are some unidentified receipts, then he should con confirm with the AR team that who are these receipts coming from? Are they new customers? What is happening? Are these advances, are they uh, posted correctly? What is what is happening with these transactions? So that is why it is very important to have the discussion among a team uh, who is handling different parts of the audit because everything is, is uh, linked. Another, exp exp another example was, uh, capital expenditure and uh, repairs and maintenance, those are linked. Like, so if a person who is scrutinizing the repairs and maintenance uh, ledger should talk to the capital uh, expenditure team that what is happening and if he, he suspects that they should be capitalized. So uh, it should, that, that's, that's, that's the goal that, uh, that is the responsibility of the auditor audit partner that he's making sure that these discussions are happening among the team. Then um, a risk assessment procedures and related activities. So based on the uh, review and uh, effectiveness of internal control, then the risk would be assessed and the procedures would be designed as per that. Now he needs to uh, make sure that the, the management is, uh, like he will take interviews of the management and ask them to have their assessment of risk, what, what they think, what is, their, what is their process of identifying the risk, uh, stopping the fraud, what is their process, understand that. And um, then um, another thing is the unusual or unexpected relationships identified. So throughout the audit, there are various uh, processes or things that are done to identify the links uh, between different different sections of the audit, like say analytical procedures when you're doing ratio analysis or trend analysis, you're comparing uh, what are the industry benchmarks? What was the trend for last year? What, what was the trend for last five years? And then if something has changed, what are the reasons for that change? Has something really changed uh, in, in, in the business circumstances? Are there, um, so it would, would it have a material impact on the ratio to fluctuate? So you need to understand the reasons for these type of uh, situations. So for example, say current ratio is unusually higher than, so higher current ratio would definitely uh, uh, indicate your liquidity position, but like if it's unexceptionally higher, what is happening? Are AR overstated? Is is revenue, revenue overstated where there are um, like an um, AR or, customer balances, which are not recoverable. So you need to have that uh, inquisitive mind and you need to understand those relationships between one aspect of the financial statement to the another aspect and then investigate based on that. So any unusual or any unexpected relationship that is identified during the audit should be investigated further. Now, um, identification and assessment of risk of material misstatement due to fraud. So like if, if the fraud, if you, Think that the fraud has happened, then you'll have to uh, assess the risk. What is the risk? Is it overall uh, financial statement basis, or it, is it at the assertion level, or it is at the class of transactions? So, like, is it that only revenue could be misstated, or is it only some expense uh, could be misstated? Uh, so, you you need to ascertain based on your observations that which area it is getting uh, affected. Now, in your um, in your uh, case as well, like if there are multiple uh, adjustments and at the at the end, the financial uh, statement adjustment that you're making, it is 
beyond your threshold, then you, you need to you need to uh, maybe qualify your opinion, or you'll have to change your uh, materiality to that extent. So all these factors get get affected uh, due to that. Now, um, yeah. So uh, another important uh, is important point is the auditor should treat those assessed risk of material state misstatement due to fraud as significant risk and accordingly to the extent not already done so auditor shall identify entities control that address such risk and evaluate their design and determine uh, whether they have been implemented now it is important to understand that why fraud happens so there is always in in the appendix uh, section they have um, uh, discussed the the three main reasons of fraud, which is known as a fraud risk triangle. So one uh, such reason, first reason is opportunity. So just there is there is no reason as such, but there is just an opportunity. Like there is, uh, say for example, there are weak internal controls. As we discussed, there is no segregation of duty. Uh, the person who is drawing the checks is also signing. So he has an opportunity uh, to commit the fraud. So. What, what are the triggers? So the, read uh, read that section. They have given various examples of what is the opportunity. Then second, second part of the um, fraud risk is incentive or pressure. So like, are you incentivized by the manager if you, um, if you save somewhere or you, you are, you have that, uh, you have some individual uh, personal circumstances that you are going through some loss or some, you have some debt and you need money so that is that gives you an opportunity to commit fraud and third is management is corrupt so like the attitude or ra rationalization of the company as such the company culture itself like management is putting pressure uh, about performance showing profit um, like trade price like stock prices has to be has to hit certain levels so those create pressure on the employees to commit fraud to suppress expenses to like in to inflate the revenues and things like that so identify if there are any triggers or any 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 such reasons that are existing in the company um and then what is the response of the auditor so the auditor's response should be the overall response is always talking to the management then audit procedures designing the procedures which are response to the Assessed risk. So, if you have assessed the risk as a higher, higher risk, then you you will have to um, do more procedures that are uh, related to that over, overall controls. So, then at this stage, like you started with a, a certain plan, you might have to redesign your audit plan. You might have to re redesign your audit risk and the materiality and the evidence thresholds, and then you might have to collect do more work to. Uh, confirm to, to how much extent the misstatement if if it exists how to, to how much extent it exists and uh, uh, then our usual you have to evaluate the evidence you have to collect the document you have to get written representation from the management regarding uh, regarding their the internal controls their responsibility of the detection and uh, prevention of the fraud and uh, you have to communicate with the management with your findings if if you have ident if the auditor has identified fraud or has an information that indicates that fraud fraud may exist the maybe the audit committee or the board should need need to know that um, this is this is, these are the findings and uh, as we discussed like sometimes there could be an uh, a, a th uh, responsibility to report the fraud to the the external authorities like law. Um, so there could be that. And the documentation of everything, whatever evidence you have collected and whatever procedures you have done to identify there that there is a the fraud exists or there is a possibility of fraud or whatever your conclusion is. And then uh, there is all this explanatory material. As I said, like to read through this uh, material, uh, especially this part. Risk assessment, no. Identification responses. They have given so much detail in this appendix. Okay, yeah. So examples of fraud risk factors, that's what I was saying that um, 
the the fraud triangle so incentive opportunity and attitudes and they have given uh, specific examples as to what does that mean so risk factors related to financial reporting and then risk factors related to misappropriation of asset both type of frauds and what are the factors so for say for example what could be the incentive so a uh, high degree of competitive or market saturation accompanied by decline declining margins so they are uh, they are pressured uh, to uh, report like maybe uh, higher revenue or uh, avoiding costs to report so so identify if there are any any such factors uh, existing in that then uh, opportunities like significant related party transaction not in ordinary course of business or with related parties not audited or audited by other firm a strong financial presence or ability to dominate a certain industry sector that allows that so there are different factors that they have given it is just important to read these these because in case scenario they might be using one of these uh, factors and uh, when if, if you have um, already gone through these it might it might click you at that moment oh this is this is the opportunity section from this this ha this gives the fraud so you need to link it back to cas 240 and uh, quote it that it, this is this is a factor and then that's why if if required the materiality and risk impacts of those um, case facts as as per the case facts and then in the uh, second section as was we're saying they have given the examples of the audit procedures to assess those risks, to address those risks. And uh, they have given very specific uh, uh, examples of the audit procedures. So like for inventory, say visiting locations or performing certain tests on a surprise or unannounced basis. So like an surprise inventory audit. So uh, if you suspect there is some uh, fraud on the inventory reporting or any uh, valuation of inventory, then what are the specific procedures? Just don't say that verify inventory. What is the specific specific procedure? Is that visit that location, observe the inventory count when auditor is in attendance. So this becomes very specific then. Requesting the inventory is counted at the end of reporting period or date closer to the period to uh, minimize the risk of manipul manipulation of balances in the period between date of completion of the count and the reporting period. Then um, for uh, revenue and accounts receivable, contacting major customers and suppliers orally in addition to sending written confirmation. Now, whenever we uh, think about an audit procedure for accounts receivable, we think about, okay, sending confirmation, balance confirmation letters, but this could be an additional procedure that you could write that if there is a suspect suspected fraud or uh, misstatement in accounts receivable balance. So this could be an additional specific procedure that contact them, like actually call them and uh, contact the major customers orally in addition to sending. So this would help you to be very specific uh, in your writing, your uh, uh, audit procedures. And um, that's it for, this is a long standard. So, uh, I would suggest give it a detailed read and uh, you will have to, wherever you find uh, relevant sections, quote that as per CA CAS 240, it suggests this, this, this. So uh, hopefully this was helpful. And, uh, and um, as usual, like, share, subscribe, uh, let your friends know about this channel and I'll see you next time. Thank you.